Hey guys, you're watching the EJ Tech Show and today we've got for you our review of the iQ Z3 5G. At its competitive starting price of 19,990 rupees, is this the best new affordable 5G smartphone out there? Let's find out. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the Editor G channel and if you enjoy this video, leave a thumbs up so we can keep making more videos for you just like this one. The iQOO Z3 5G sports a 6.58-inch FHD Plus LCD display with a 120Hz refresh rate and a 180Hz touch sampling rate. It's HDR10 certified and gets Widevine L1 certification for Netflix. Despite being a punchy and vibrant display, colors are well-balanced enough and don't seem to be oversaturated. Moreover, while we would have appreciated an OLED display, it seems iQOO has made the choice to go with an LCD panel to keep costs down something that buyers will surely appreciate. On the design front, the Z3 5G looks quite modern and distinct without being too loud or in your face. There's a rectangular camera module at the back for the triple camera array with a silver surround on the main sensor. However, it is a glossy plastic back so if you want to keep it safe from scratches, you can use the free silicone case provided in the box. We've received the Ace Black color variant that sees a silver to near black gradient finish which looks quite nice. If you want something flashier, iQOO does offer a cyber blue variant as well that sports a cool pearlescent finish. Another plus point is the fact that the Z3 5G is just 8.5mm thin and 185.5g in weight so it's quite a handy device to hold. Utility-wise, there's all the usual suspects, a 3.5mm headphone jack, a USB Type-C port and a single bottom firing speaker. There's a hybrid SIM card tray here that can take either two nano SIM cards at once or one SIM card along with a micro SD storage card. The side-mounted fingerprint scanner on the Z3 works well and unlocks the device fairly quickly with rarely any failed inputs. When it comes to performance, the iQ Z3 5G is the first smartphone in India to be powered by the new Qualcomm Snapdragon 768G chipset. Coupled with up to 8GB RAM like this model has, it breezes through daily tasks and even multitasking. The 120Hz high refresh rate and 180Hz touch sampling rate also work well to make the user experience smooth and snappy. Graphic intensive games like Call of Duty Mobile run on this device with no trouble at high graphic settings and high frame rate and temperatures remain under control as well thanks to a 5 layer liquid cooling system. On the software front, the Z3 5G ships with Android 11 out of the box and so it gets all the latest features like nearby share and more. It runs on Funtouch OS 11.1 which has certainly gotten better with time, but there's still a bit of bloatware on the device that won't be appreciated by everyone. Moreover, while some of the apps can be uninstalled, others can't even be disabled. The iQ Z3 5G sports a triple rear camera setup with a 64 megapixel main sensor, an 8 megapixel ultra wide sensor, and a 2 megapixel macro sensor. Now, like with similarly priced competitors, the main camera is what it's all about, with the other two mostly just there for support. Pictures with the main sensor look pretty colorful in outdoor settings without seeming oversaturated. The HDR also works quite well compared to other phones we've tested at this price point. Overall though, there's a good amount of detail and shadows come through well. The ultrawide sensor is alright and for the most part offers a different perspective to wider shots. However, at times there's a bit of color loss and noise noticeably in slightly darker areas of the image. It's a slightly similar story with the macro sensor. While it does allow you to get closer to subjects, the sensor's lower resolution means that it doesn't capture detail or color as well as the main sensor can with 2x digital zoom. Low light photography on the Z3 5G is a bit of a mixed bag. In very dimly lit conditions, it does do a good job of brightening the frame with the dedicated night mode but not without introducing a lot of noise and grain. However, in images with mixed lighting, it performs a bit better. Moreover, since there's no optical image stabilization, in some low-light images you may end up getting shaky images due to the delayed shutter. When it comes to videos, the Z3 5G can shoot at a maximum 4K at 60fps, which is quite good to see on a phone at this price point. You can also shoot slow-mo videos at up to 240fps in 720p resolution. 
For selfies, the iQOO Z35G sports a 16 megapixel sensor, which takes nice selfies in outdoor conditions. Edge detection in the portrait mode is also pretty decent, considering this is a single sensor setup. Even in indoor conditions, selfies are clear and full of detail, with the portrait mode managing to crop out subjects without an issue. Videos with the front camera can be shot at up to 1080p resolution. Keeping the lights on here is a 4400mAh battery, which will easily last you a day despite heavy usage. If you're a frugal user and keep the high refresh rate setting on smart switch, you can probably get the battery to last even further. Charging speed is 55 watts, so the phone can go from flat to full in almost exactly an hour, which is pretty great. All things considered, the iQOO Z35G is quite a well-rounded package. It has a camera that performs well in most conditions, a chipset that doesn't struggle under heavy workloads, and a battery that will last you through even the heaviest of days. All that at a competitive price point makes this a solid, inexpensive 5G smartphone. By now, a lot of us are aware of how much of our personal and public data online is used by tech companies to let advertisers sell products to us. In fact, growing awareness around the subject has begun to affect policy, with many countries enforcing stricter laws on the collection of user data. All this in turn has spurred tech companies to begin offering ways for users to track how much of their data is being collected and how it's being used. More importantly, some firms have now begun to allow users to restrict apps from tracking certain data altogether if they so wish. Google is one such example, with the tech giant recently announcing that it's changing the unique device identifier or advertising ID that allows advertisers to track users across different apps on their phone. Let's take a look at all the changes and how they affect you, the user. Advertising IDs are unique identifiers provided to developers by Google Play services that allows both users and developers better control over how user data is used to monetize an app through advertising. For instance, it lets users reset their ID or opt out of personalized ads and also lets developers help advertisers on their app to better target their users by creating a profile using this data. Now, Google has allowed users to opt out of personalized ads before, but soon opting out of them will also restrict a developer's access to the advertising ID. From later this year, if a user opts out of personalized ads, the developer will only see a string of zeros in place of the identifier. While there's no particular date mentioned, Google has told developers that the change in advertising ID will take effect from late 2021 and affect apps running on Android 12 devices. The process will then later be expanded to affect apps running on all devices that support Google Play by early 2022. Google has said that it will still support persistent identifiers like a user's Android ID. However, developers can use these only for non-advertising purposes and only as long as they have a privacy policy. They must also be able to handle this user data in accordance with the developer distribution agreement and comply with all applicable local privacy laws to access the data from persistent identifiers. To opt out of personalized ads on your Android device and prevent sharing your advertising ID, you can head over to the Settings app and tap on the section marked Google. Then in the Services section, tap on Ads, where you'll find an option to opt out of ads personalization. It's worth noting that Google has said it may restrict even persistent identifiers down the line, or at least allow users more control over how they're used by developers. The tech giant has also announced that it plans to add privacy information on the Play Store for each app. Moreover, Google isn't the only one to do this. In fact, Apple introduced restrictions to ad tracking by apps with its iOS 14.5 update in April this year. However, unlike Google, Apple asks users to opt in to ad tracking, thereby restricting developers from accessing user data even further.